Hi, I'm Dave Ingebretson. The Royal High and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. And I hate to say it, but tonight we're all wet. <laughs> Everything we tie is going to be a wet pattern. Uh, we're going to start out with one that is very humorous to those of us in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, <laughs> we all know about Shamu the killer whale. People in other mm -hmm. parts of the country may not. This is going to be a leech pattern tied out of chamois leather, and I love the guy who named it. He calls it Shamo the Killer Leech, <laughs> and uh, we're all just, we think it's hilarious. <laughs> it well, is it may not be, but I like it. Uh, I like it. We're going to start out with Shamo the Killer Leech, then we're going to tie a stonefly nymph developed by George Harvey, simply called the Harvey Stonefly Nymph, and we're going to finish up with another uh, Northwest tire. Uh, not another Northwest tire, because Harvey, of course, is from Pennsylvania, but uh, we're going to finish up with the Teeny Nymph. Jim Teeny. Jim right. Teeny, yep. All right, for Shamu, the killer leech, <laughs> we'll start off with a uh, fluorescent red 6 aught tying thread. This fly will have black uh, dumbbell eyes. The body material will be Canadian brown leech, and this is the where the fly gets its name. This is tail cut it right from this chamois, colored it with black marker, and that's how the fly got its name. And you want to be sure to use the real leather chamois. Yes. Uh, this stuff is stiff when it's dry, but when it's wet, it's going to darken the color, and it moves so well. Uh, I was telling very, you very before slinky. we started yeah. that I cut the tails for my deer hair mice out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even when the mouse is sitting still, that tail just moves, and uh, <laughs> this is going to be a great leech pattern. All right, I'll tie on a set of dumbbell eyes. Figure eight them. And then I do something a little different. I don't know if this makes any difference or not, but after I get several figure eights, I go around the whole thing, staying just on top of the hook shank. Oh, sure. I think that's that a, binds everything. That's a Boy Scout trick for lashing, uh, lashing oh, poles that together. Right? It tightens it all down. No oh, yeah. No. All right. Back to the rear we go. Now this is a 4X long hook. It's a size 8. And I'll take that little piece of chamois that we cut. Uh, what I've done is I've colored it on both sides with that marker. Just a few spots. Tapered it. Yeah, just spots. I've tapered it where I can tie this section in and hopefully it will stay on top of the hook. Get that bound in good. And as I say, it looks kind of light colored now, but when it's wet, that chamois will, will darken yeah. up. Now, this Canadian brown leech yarn, I guess it's still available. I've had this for quite a while. But it's, it a is, it's a mohair. It's a mohair. And you could But it's multiple, multiple colors. Well, that's hair. the neat part about yes. it. But I think it is a little hard to come by, but if you just use a, a brown mohair. Or a dubbing, a brown yeah. dubbing would also work. Uh, legs. Well, I think the thing is with the leech, it go, it's going to give it some movement. Yeah. Legs on this fly could also be an option. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it. I'm not worried about all this stuff. I'll pull a little bit of it out as I go, but I'll go back through and pick it out. You want it to be shaggy. Very shaggy. And the trouble with this leech yarn is you bind it down when you wrap, and you do have to go back through and pick it out. And I've never had any of that, and I hear people telling about it. Uh, I never think about looking for it when I'm in Canada. And as you say, the beauty of it is the, the oh, uh, mix of colors. It has reds, it has oranges, it has a little bit of black. Now, I'm also going to take this mohair, this leech yarn, and figure eight around those eyes, which will also give the fly a little bit more of a... Of a uh, well, a head and it'll cover yeah, up the and thread. It'll cover yeah, cover up all of that thread on it. Because it's basically a simple tie. It just gives it a little bit more of a dressed appearance yeah. is all. Oh, yeah. Now, I'll come in and build just a little head with this. Legs would also be optional on this fly. You well, could put I've some, never seen a leech with legs. I haven't either. <laughs> I haven't either. But it would it would it could be an option on it. The famous walking leech. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, I'll take my my little tool here and see if I can pick that out some. I may have to go in with a bodkin and, and do it better because this binds down so tightly. Now we, I keep telling people about that tool because we're not sure that everybody has <laughs> happened to see the show where we've done it before, but it's a tool that uh, is made out of a popsicle stick 
And on both sides, he's, he's uh, glued, he's glued little strips of the hook mm -hmm. portion of a hook and loop fastener. But you can see how that's pulled it all out. It, it's really made it very long and very shaggy. You know, that fly has got to work in the water. Oh, you, you will be amazed when that's wet at that tail. The now, would you set. use that for, I'll put you on the spot again, would you use that for trout? Would you use it for bass? Well, I often use it for smallmouth bass, but in a trout lake, uh, the trout hit leeches just as well. Sure they would. And so, yeah, it, it can go either way, and you could tie it in a variety of sizes. Now, will that chamois darken up a whole lot? Quite a bit. And, of course, the other thing, too, is those lead eyes are going to give it a movement. It will, and it will make it right upside and down. And so if you twitch that thing, uh -huh. it's going to just swim. Up and uh, that's down. going to be dynamite. Yeah, that, that's dynamite. quite a fly. Quite and, a fly. Uh, you, could, you could use... Even, you could use rabbit, a strip of rabbit fur mm -hmm. for the body to make mm -hmm. it even shaggier. Uh, the, the secret of that is the weight forward with the lead eyes and that really, really uh, soft, slimy tail. That, oh. oh. And you know, I was thinking too, you might even, even though that tail's going to darken up in the water, you might even go in with a permanent marker. Yep and maybe make it even a little darker. Well, and you might That's want to tie a black pattern. Sure could. In which case, I'd just darken that whole thing and make wouldn't worry about black. the spots. That's right. And uh, use black uh, rabbit for the, for the body, rabbit mm -hmm. strip. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Now I've gone in and just picked some more of that out with my bodkin, but you can see that it just has those little fibers just sticking out every yeah. which way to go along with but that the tail. tail. That's the secret. Oh, oh absolutely it tail. is. Yeah. Well, there's a shamu, the killer leech, has the tail made out of the leather chamois. The body is made out of Canadian brown leech yarn. The eyes are a dumbbell eye painted black. You could even put red pupils in it if sure you want. Could. And then the, uh, the thread was six-aught fluorescent red thread. Now, I don't know about the eyes, of course, most leeches you don't see the eyes uh -huh. on. But I think it's mostly just but to get the fly down, that's right the thing upside here, down, well make it to get twitch. the action, sure. yeah. And that's going to do it. Sure. Those are going to be in my box come summertime. I'd be anxious to talk to you, see if you've done any good with bass with them. Oh, I will. There's no question. That's interesting. With smallmouth and largemouth, too, you could tie mm -hmm. it in big sizes. Well, you could even do that in a river around here then. Yeah. You could use that in oh, the yeah. river the same oh, for smallmouth. Like, oh, Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. That's neat, that's a neat fly. Yep. All right, the next fly we're gonna do is gonna be a stonefly nymph designed by the legendary George Harvey in Pennsylvania, and it's called, simply enough, the Harvey Stonefly Nymph. Mm -hmm. All right, we will use black eight-aught tying thread. I have a gold fine wire that we'll use for the ribbing. The legs on this will be partridge. Uh, some people may use grouse for it. The back is a mottled brown hen bat or feather. The tail will be a turkey tail, some turkey tail fiber, I'm sorry, pheasant tail fibers. And the body will be the yellow uh, wool yarn. You could uh, also use gold. He yarn. also uses a gold. Yes. Yeah. So we'll dress the shank. I told you six aught thread. This is eight aught. It may not make a big difference to some, but. Well, we are always perfectly honest. Always honest. This is a 2X long hook. It's a size 8. I'll take a few sections of this pheasant tail, get them even as I can. And this is a little bit longer tail than on a lot of the patterns that I've seen. I, I cannot tell you why that is. But there's the pheasant tail tail. Now, I'm going to tie on. Oh, I've got well, one already. You probably want to put there. the rib on first. Oh, yeah, sure. I want the rib first. I'd have forgotten that again, Dave. That's why I'm here. That's why well, you're, you're paying me the big bucks. So good to me. Tying a piece of this gold wire for the ribbing. Just run that up the hook just a little ways. And then I'll tie in this. Really any mottled brown feather. Any one. And it has a good side, a dull side, a, brown, a, a uh, shiny side. I'm going to tie it backwards. I'm going to tie it by the tip, but it's going to be the dull side is up so that when I fold it over, the dull side or the 
good side will then be down, as you can see as it wraps across. And it's nice to tie it in by the tips mm -hmm. because then you've got the stem and everything comes together as a unit and you don't have odd feather right. fibers flaring out right. to the sides. Now this is a four strand uh, yellow yarn. I'm going to try to get one strand out. I'm afraid four might be too. Well, the nice part about one is you can shape it any way you want and taper well, it if you want to or yeah. twist it tighter or let it go loose. Uh, I'm going You've to got take a lot of flexibility yeah, with I'm it. I'm going to take two with this one. And this, you know, should be tapered a little bit uh, from the body to the forward part mm -hmm. like a regular stonefly nymph would mm -hmm. be. All right. That's all bound in place. Now, I, I do know uh, that sometimes they tie this weighted and sometimes unweighted. I was going to ask you if they And when they that. tie it weighted, they make sure that they get just a few wraps up near the front, maybe a third of the hook shank in front. Oh, of, of the wire, lead wire, you mean? Yeah. yeah. The non-lead wire or whatever, yeah. So it can be tied either way, and it would partly depend on the kinds of water, how deep it is, how fast it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially the speed of the water. Yeah. 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 All right, now I've got the body tied in. Now I'm going to fold this back over. Now some of this the material is going not to tie down. Now I'm just going to have to cut it off. This forms the back and the wing case all in one. Now I'll trim this off. And there's a few stragglers over here. Does make a good looking back. Well, especially when you bind it down and put yeah, that over Yeah, now the rib will come forward. That gives it a segmented body appearance and, and it binds it everything durable. together. Yeah. And there's the rib. And then he takes the uh, partridge or grouse. Just pull a few feathers We've off. We've had an interesting discussion about that because uh, People in the East that are talking about the rough grouse always often call them partridge. Mm, I, I'd never heard that. And so said, uh, out here in the West, when we're talking about, about partridge, we're talking about the gray Hungarian partridge. Uh -huh. And if we want the uh, other, we talk about the grouse. So it, it occurred to us uh, the other day that we didn't really know whether he was talking about grouse as we know it or partridge as we know it. Well, we hit a happy medium by taking some dark partridge. Dark partridge, yeah. <laughs> All right, I've got the legs tied in on one side, and I do this in two clumps. Now, you could also wrap that feather just like you would a regular hackle, uh -huh. and then trim it top and bottom, which would give the same appearance. I'll tie that on. I want it about the same length as the other one. I'll pull that through just a little. I'm going to get rid of those butts. Well, I, better wrap I wish I'd have thought I was, I was talking to Joe Humphrey on the phone the other day about this fly, but I, uh, he was the one that was telling me about the pattern, and I wish I'd have thought to ask him that Hungarian partridge question. Whether it's partridge or whether, whether it's, it's grouse. Whether it's really grouse, yeah. But you know, with those little legs out there just kicking along, it would, represent, nice pattern? Mm -hmm, it would represent a lot of different things. Mm. I'll get a little head build on there. Fold that wing back out of the way just slightly. Now, Rotate around, you can see what those legs look like coming out either side. Put a little head cement on them. I'd also head cement that back. Oh, would there. you? Yeah, I think so. Give it hmm. a little bit shinier appearance. What you don't do you that on well, yours. Well, I haven't, but you certainly could. Why don't you do it and let's see what happens. I will. We've experimented with everything else on this Might show. Well. We just will do that. And it's going to darken up and richen the color. A little color. bit, yeah. Little it bit. definitely will make that color a lot richer. Yeah. Let me get this put away and I'll rotate that around. Yeah. There you can see how that oh, yeah. really makes it shine. Well, it really does. Got the little legs sticking out. There's the different colored belly on it and the oh. pheasant tail fibers. 
Well, there's a Harvey stone flying nymph. It has the pheasant tail fibers for the tail. It has the yellow wool body ribbed with gold wire. It has the model brown hen for the back. And it has the partridge or the grouse, whichever you want to tie in, for the legs. And you can optionally, you can tie it with gold yarn. Yes. I like the gold version. It's a nice blend of yeah, colors. Yeah, I think I yeah. would too, rather than that yellow. Yeah, it makes a good blend of colors. Uh -huh. All right, the next fly we're going to tie is the famed Teeny Nymph, named after its developer, Jim Teeny. It's a simple fly to tie, except for one little tricky detail, but it uses a lot of complex materials. Why don't you tell us what they are? <laughs> a lot of com All right, I'll use a tan, eight-aught tying thread, and the only material in the fly is some pheasant tail fibers. But and the one the, complex thing you're saying is getting the measurement right, right for the size fly you're using. Now, Jim ties these in a million different colors, mm -hmm. and he's got available purple and pink red. and green and chartreuse yeah. and red and any color pheasant tail you can imagine. Now, I have a, a 2X long. It's a size 10. And again, he ties them in lots and lots of different sizes on here. I will dress the tying the th hook with the tying now, thread. This is the only fly he will fish with. I, I've Whether read he's that, fishing yeah. for salmon or steelhead, I suppose in salt water. He's Just got some great big long things with legs coming out all over. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. And sometimes, of course, when you're tying on a really long hook, uh, one, bent, one uh, hunk of feather isn't enough mm -hmm. to finish the hook. Well, then you just tie in another bunch and keep going. Now what I've done is I've just stripped off some of those fibers. I'm trying to get them as even as I can because this is, like you said, the tricky part. How do you know where to tie it in so that when you wrap this on, you're going to have the correct amount of length of... See, those tips are going to form tips, the legs. Yes, to come after back After you underneath. wrap the whole thing around the hook. So no, you don't know. We'll just wrap it on and see what happens here. The only uh, thing I'm going to do is hold them as tightly as I can in my hand yeah. and just wrap forward. Now, if the legs are a little long, it's better than if they're too short. Too short, that's correct. Now, if I were tying this for myself, I would rib the fly. I with think a, so. With a Make fine it much copper more durable. Wire. Yeah. Now, I've lost one of them there, but I'm going to go ahead and tie that down, what I have, and not worry. Hey, you nailed it. That might be... A good one. I think so. And then I'm going to just grab all of these, fold them to the rear, and then you build the little head. And as you wrap backwards, you capture all those legs to keep them going out toward the bend of the hook. And as that fly goes through the water, it just swims and kicks and carries well, That's perfect. On. It is. That one came out very Absolutely well. Absolutely right. Now, you know, the first time I ran into these, uh, I was invited to go fishing with Jim whom I'd never met, mm -hmm. with he and his dad and a couple of other guys up in British Columbia. And we were going to be up there fishing for pink salmon, among other things, and, uh, which I had never done. And there were salmon rolling all over the place. And I went upstream above them a ways. And every time I looked down, one of the three of them would have a fish on. Oh, really? And I couldn't catch one. No matter what I put on, I could not catch one. They were laughing and having a great time. And I went downstream to see what they were doing. Well, it turns out they were using a number four black teeny nymph. Okay. And f they gave me some, and I started catching fish. And for the whole time, what do you use? No, I'm experimenting with the black number four. Oh, wow. And I've since caught uh, sockeye salmon on them, uh -huh. uh, a variety of things. But as I say, that's all Jim fishes in a variety of sizes and colors. And he's an outstanding steelhead fisher. Now, I've seen this fly tied. <clears throat> where it will be on a longer shank hook. Mm -hmm. They will do the wrap just as we did here, right. but then come to the center of the longer hook, right. tie the legs off here so it's coming yeah. down. Another clump, run to the yeah. front. Now you have a basic double leg. They can double either hook. do it that way or they can just tie it in without Another the legs. Another section. And it just depends and run on what forward. they're doing. Just exactly well, that's what you're a teeny nymph for. and extremely complex. Extremely complex. Nothing more than pheasant tail fibers and tan tying thread. All right, today we've got a bonus fly for you. We're going to put four in this series, and we're going to finish up with a betus nymph. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple little fly, nice looking. We'll use an uh, olive, eight-aught. Again, I have the dyed hen grizzly, dyed olive. 
The body material will be a olive green dubbing and the wing case will be black ostrich. I have a size 12, 2X long hook in the vise. And that's a big betas. Yeah. I mean, betas, they'll run down to oh, 22, 20, 22. It said, yeah. And most of them are pretty small, but here this will help it show up on the screen much better than uh, tying a tiny one. But you will want to tie this fly in a variety of sizes. Now what I did was I've just taken one feather off of that uh, dyed olive hen saddle there, and that will become the tail. Cinch it down and come forward, make sure I get them all in. And now I'm going to take the dubbing. Too much. That's always the problem. When you haven't dubbed for a little while, you always grab too much dubbing and put it on the, try to get it on the thread. Yeah, this tied in smaller sizes would be a dynamite fly. Oh, yeah. Not sure that's enough, but we'll see what happens with it. Get my little dubbing loop tool here. Hook it in the middle. Fold it over. Make sure you capture the whole thing. And come up to the front. Twist it slightly. And here it goes for the body. trying to taper that slightly as I go forward. I don't think I'm going to have enough dubbing on this first well, time through. pretty close. Oh, uh, it might. It might do all right. Okay. Now I'm going to take a small section of this uh, olive hen again. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. We'll get that tied down. Take my hackle pliers and just a wrap and a half, maybe. We'll yeah, do you it. want just sparse legs. Yeah. Well, I can't hang on to it. Just a couple of wraps, wrap and a half, maybe. Cinch them down and clip it off. I'm going to fold that back just a little bit and get wrapped down over it. And now for the wing case, and I've never seen this done before, but it'd be a good wing case. That's just a, it's free, just a free case. Free case, yeah. yeah it's, it's nothing more than black ostrich. I've got four or five fibers here. Depending on what size or what caliber of, of uh, ostrich you have, bind it down and then just clip it off. It's going to be okay. fairly short. Well, now, while you're finishing up that fly, why don't you tell us again the materials? Well, I can do that even. Uh, we had the tail and the legs out of the uh, olive dyed grizzly mm -hmm. uh, hackle cape. The body is black, uh, no, olive dubbing, olive dubbing and black ostrich for the uh, wing case. Free wing, wing case. case, yeah. So, this time we've started out with Shamo the Killer Leech. We tied the Harvey Stone Fly Nymph. Mm -hmm. We've tied the Teeny Nymph, and we've finished up with the Betas Nymph. Mm -hmm. So, we hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you'll join us next time. Thanks for watching. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100-minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the Western and Eastern United States. For basic Western and Eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.